In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we're going to show you how to use some techniques we've been learning in order to emulate the beginning of a Christmas movie that uh, you may see in American television. This has been inspired by my wife and I looking at some Hallmark movies recently, so I thought I'd ask myself, can I reproduce this in Power Director? The answer is, eh, I think you can. So let me show you a couple of the de decisions that you have to make in order to produce this. But before that, what I'd like to do is pause this and show you the finished product, which is 19 seconds long. Okay, what I'd like to do now is show you some of the things that we did in order to get the product you just saw. I'll break it down pretty simply. First thing we did was we needed a uh, clip of video, and that's on track number one. We simply took this from my subscription to Digital Juice. The next thing we did is put a few snowflakes in front of it, and so we just used the snow effect. I'll double click on my effect track and widen it so you can see all the options. You have to choose between the wind, the smallest size, the largest size, density, and 3D depth, and that's what we did. And your choice may be different from mine. The third one down on the left side is simply a green color board. Uh, all I did was take off the automatic proportions, made a long, narrow rectangle, and put it at the bottom. Continuing down, we did the lettering here. This is a simple title tool. If I double click on it, uh, you'll see that what I have is the Hall Mask channel, uh, deliberately misspelled. Don't want to get into trouble. And then the, uh, the logo below it, which comes in a little bit later. So that's, that accounts for those two items that you see there. We'll cancel that. Uh, below that, we have two whiteboards. If I click on the first one, you'll see it's actually a whiteboard, but it's highly opaque. And it makes the lettering stand out that you'll see below it. But let me show you one thing I had to do with that to get the effect I wanted. When I double click on that, I have the normal opacity. Normal is 43%. But then toward the end of it, I used my um, keyframing to change it. So right here it's still 43%, but at the very end it's 0%. And so between this point in time and this point in time, I wanted the box to fade out. Why? Because I also wanted the letters to fade out. I wanted them to do it together, and that accounts for the timing of the fade here in this particular object. So that accounts for the first whiteboard. The second whiteboard is something that we have an entire lesson on. It is simply looks like an expanding white line. And so when we move that from the beginning forward, it's one of those that just grows a little bit at a time. We have an entire lesson on how to do that in uh, our lesson section here at the Sharper Turtle. But that's what I did with the second whiteboard. All it is is looking like a line. Then the other two uh, are uh, color boards that are not white but red. And that accounts for what you see on the two corners here. If I click on one of them. You'll see how we did this. This is not an external graphic. It's simply a color board that we shrunk down and then we rotated and we put across the lower left corner of our screen in our project. And then I did the same thing to the other color board for the right side of the project. So that's one way to do that without relying on external graphics. The last item I want to show you on the left side is our main title. Uh, the, it's the, the Christmas Country Vacation. Again, we have a different font. So we used uh, uh, two different titles in the title designer. And uh, uh, we also... If I right click on if I click on the right side, I applied a fade effect to both of these. 
And again, that also goes with the fade effect of the uh, semi-opaque background on which we put them. A couple other items I'd like to show you here. Um, we have a music track we'll talk about in a moment. But then after we move the clip uh, a ways, let me take my slider, my time indicator, here we have the name starting to pop up. I use Tidler Pro. Why? Let me show you why. I'll click on that and we'll load the Tidler Pro screen. And here in Tidler Pro, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the beginning and we'll play this. And you see the first name coming in, the second below it, and the third replaces the first, and the fourth replaces the second. This was pretty easy to do by using a simple fade in by word for all four of them and timing them appropriately and positioning them that way too. But I also wanted a title that simply had a, a fill that looked like it was evergreen. And so on each of these titles in my style area, I clicked, a, I selected a texture and went to a PNG graphic file, which was a file that looked like evergreen. And that's something I could not do in the regular title tool, but I can do it pretty easily in Titler Pro 1.0 or 1.5. So that's why we have this tool here rather than a regular title. And then the other thing we did was we put in uh, later on after the names pop in, we transition and we're going to have a location where this supposedly happens. And I used a regular title tool for that. There was one other decision that we had to make in order to uh, do this 19 second clip, and that was related to timing. I pulled in this music again from uh, digital, digital Juice, but the problem was the music was three minutes long. Well, it was no problem for me to split it at a uh, good point in, in the sequence of the sound, but the problem was it didn't split exactly at the length of the video. Um, I cut it at 19 seconds and five frames. My problem is my clip was originally 18 seconds long. So here's what we had to do. And the little eye here tells you what we did. It says power tools, video speed, now, tools, power tools, video speed, speed adjustment. And so what I did here is I simply typed in the length I wanted it to be. I was going to add one second and five frames. Now, since there's no audio with this, I don't have to worry about it looking or sounding bad. And since it's only uh, one second and five frames longer, you really don't notice the difference in terms of the motion of the people. And so it calculated the multiplier, it multiplied the original uh, clip by 0.939, which lengthened it. Remember, when you multiply it by a number lower than zero, it gets longer. And that way it would fit perfectly with the music. That's one other thing that we did. This 19 second experiment uh, took about an hour and a half to do. But I hope I introduced you a little bit to some of the thinking you can do and some of the processes you can apply in turning out something that looks a little better than amateurish by the time you're all done using CyberLink PowerDirector.